Hey everyone, I'm Katie from Addicted to DIY, and today I'm gonna to be talking about lasering and extreme temperatures. So I live in the Southwest. In fact, I live in Arizona, and our temperatures in the summertime get pretty high. Um, it's very hot, very dry typically, um, and it is not uncommon for us to have several days over 110 degrees. Sometimes we even top out over 120 degrees. That's happened a few times in the last few years. Um, and our average summer temperatures are about 106 degrees. So definitely very warm. And it was a big concern for me when I was choosing a laser. So my wood shop is pretty large, so it is definitely hard to keep it climate controlled. In fact, the only climate control that I actually have in here is a portacool. Um, and that kind of takes the edge off. It doesn't really cool the entire building. Um, so when I was on a search for a laser last January, one of my biggest concerns was making sure that it could be in a non-climate controlled environment. So I put together a video uh, a few months ago about why I chose Thunder Laser USA as the laser that was gonna be perfect for me. So you can go ahead and watch that and understand why I chose Thunder Laser. But once I had really settled on Thunder Laser, one of the main questions, in fact, I asked this question a lot of times, was to confirm that this laser could operate in warmer temperatures. And fortunately, it can. They reassured me multiple times that it could. In the Thunder user manual, manual, it actually says that the ideal working temperatures are between 59 degrees and 77 degrees um, for the ambient temperature. However, they reassured me multiple times that this laser would be able to operate in higher heat temperatures. Their biggest concern was not letting the laser freeze, which is not a problem where I live. Now, despite the fact, when I say that's not a problem where I live, yes, I am wearing a sweatshirt, I am wearing a beanie. Um, it is early morning and it is in the mid 30s right now. However, inside my shop, it is in the low 50s. So definitely chilly, but it's not freezing temperatures. So it's not a concern for me necessarily. Um, my biggest concern was the high heat temperatures. So all Nova series lasers, which I have a Thunder Nova 51 130 watt laser, all of their Nova series lasers come with an industrial chiller. And the chiller functions by keeping the water at a safe operating temperature so that you don't have to worry about the temperature being too high and potentially damaging your laser tube. The series of chillers that these lasers come with come with smart programming or intelligent mode, and they're pre-programmed in intelligent mode. So with intelligent mode, the water temperature stays within plus or minus a few degrees of the ambient temperature. Now these chillers can also be programmed in constant mode, which means that you can choose a temperature and it will stay plus or minus a couple of degrees from whatever temperature you set. So let's say you wanna set it at 20 degrees Celsius, you can do that and your chiller will stay within plus or minus a few degrees of that temperature. And I'm gonna include a link in my description to show you exactly how you can program your laser chiller from intelligent mode to the constant settings. Now mine, I never reprogrammed it out of intelligent mode. And last summer, I believe the highest it got when I would first turn on my laser was 33 degrees Celsius. But what I would do is I would wait a period of time, usually it was about five minutes maybe, and the chiller would bring the temperature down to about 29 or 30 degrees. And in those temperatures, my laser worked perfectly fine. I didn't have any issues with it firing. The alarm never sounded on my chiller and it cut and engraved beautifully as if it was cutting in those, you know, kind of perfect ambient temperatures of 55 or 59 to 77 degrees. I never noticed a difference in the quality or performance of my laser in those higher temperatures. That being said, I did post a picture of my laser chiller temperature in the Thunder Laser Facebook group, and a lot of people got concerned about it and um, were voicing their concerns about 
the temperature of my water and whether or not that was safe for the laser to operate under those conditions or whether or not I would damage my tube. I even started to doubt myself, wondering if this was an unsafe temperature and if maybe I just needed to not be using my laser during that time of the day. Fortunately, one of the moderators who also works for Thunder came on and reassured me that the temperature that my water was set at was perfectly fine and my laser was gonna work just as it should um, and that if it was too high, like I mentioned before, an alarm would sound and the laser just won't even fire. So there is that built-in safety of making sure that you don't do any damage to your laser because the chiller will let you know if the temperatures are too high. So with all of that being said, I've had my laser since last March. And so I have worked through the spring, summer, and now the winter, and I will continue to use my laser year round. There might be times where I decide to switch it over to constant settings. Um, I might experience, experiment with that this summer. Um, and there might be days where I just won't use it um, because the temperatures are too high. And honestly, that's more of a comfort thing for me because it can get pretty unbearable in here in the summertime. I do have a fan that runs um, on me, but it still really gets warm in my shop in the summertime. Um, so I can't say that I'm gonna be lasering all day and night in the shop, but um, I might pick and choose certain days where it's more ideal. And I do wanna touch on the fact of extreme temperatures in the opposite direction. So the chiller is just as it states. It keeps the water chilled to a good operating temperature for the lasers. It does not prevent the water from freezing. And like I said before, when I was discussing purchasing the laser and extreme temperatures with the reps from Thunder Laser, their biggest concern was don't let the tube freeze because it will crack. Water expands when it's frozen, it will crack the tube, you will have to replace it. Um, not to mention potential other damage within the chiller and such. So Thunder actually has steps to mitigate freezing in your laser tube and in your chiller. And they have all of the steps to do that as well as Thunder approved antifreeze that you can put into your chiller and run it through the lines should you be concerned with freezing. I'm gonna also link to that in the description below, but I do want to make sure that you also understand that when they recommend these steps, it's only if you know that you are gonna be working in extreme cold environments where freezing is a daily threat. Um, if it's just a one-time thing, you can also, you know, there's some places in the country that got a cold snap uh, back in December and they were concerned about their laser freezing when that's not normally a concern. Um, in those instances, you do want to just drain all the water from the lines and make sure that there is no water in the tube or your chiller, so that way, uh, and then cover your laser with a blanket even, and that way it won't, you won't have to really worry about it freezing. But if you do live in environments where it is cold all the time in the winter time, and you have the potential of a daily threat of the water in your lines freezing, you can certainly use antifreeze. Um, and then once your temperatures are back above that threshold of freezing, what you wanna do is you wanna flush your lines completely um, with distilled water, flush all of the antifreeze out, and then refill your chiller with distilled water. I hope this uh, remedies any concerns that you have about lasering and extreme temperatures. I know that it, for me living in the Southwest, it was a huge concern. Um, when I first started looking at lasers, um, the very first one I started looking at was a Glowforge. And one of the reasons why I quickly determined that it was not the laser for me was that it would have to be placed in a constantly temperature controlled environment. And I just couldn't do that. Um, in my house, it would have just disrupted way too much. I do have a mini split in my workshop, um, but I don't use it that often because of how much energy it takes to constantly keep the one room in my shop cool. Um, it's, it's about an 18 by 20 foot room that I've built in my shop and that does have a mini split, but it just takes a tremendous amount of energy to keep that room cool. And I only use the mini split in there um, just to take the edge off really. It's not a constant thing that we keep running um, unless I'm doing epoxy work in there or something like that. So for me, it just wasn't practical to own a laser that had to be 
constantly kept at safe temperatures or in a climate controlled environment. So I hope you found this video helpful. Definitely leave me any questions you have in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. I've got more laser videos coming. I'm working on another one right now that's pretty exciting. So stay tuned for that. Also, make sure that you subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and hit the bell icon so that way you're always notified when I post a new video. Thank you.